are you looking at me like that for? Because you're a witch, that's why. Alright, so it seems like I might have... Um, yeah, I don't need Varrock's rumor sources. If you have a look at our last video, it looks like I what ninety five percent accurately called the uh, much. the new kill zone. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's get into it. Let's do it. Hello, welcome back to another Grimdark Gamers video where we're going to record our reactions to the Warhammer Day reveals. Yeah, we've already sat down for it. Unfortunately, we drew the short end of the stick for. Uh, hours to wake up now being on the west coast of the US. I had to get up way too early. For the most part, I think it was worth it. Yep. Turns out I might be a witch. You're definitely a witch, there's no doubt about that. But uh, let's go through the reveals in order and uh, see what we think. Absolutely. Alright Jester, you're the uh, resident Necron player around here. Well, yes. Um, so we've got Imatek the Stormlord. So uh, a nice new model here. Um, kind of fairly similar, I think, to, to the original pose, but uh, all done in the new style. I really like it. Um, I think it's, uh, it's a really cool model. Uh, I really like the cloak. I think that's very cool. Um, yeah, uh, I don't really have a huge amount to say about this one. It is just a nice model of... of, of Iteration on an old favourite. Yeah, so what I like about this guy is, first of all, it's Imotech, the first of the Necron Lords to wake up and then go, yep, yeah, all of this is mine now. Mm -hmm. His design aesthetic has definitely been updated. Um, he strikes me as very reminiscent of the uh, Necron Overlord model that came in the uh, Indomitus box. Yeah. With his classic pose. I mean, he's not your dynasty. No. You're Nihilak. I am. But, no, that is a nice, safe, solid pose. I can't remember if Games Workshop said there was going to be another Necro model. They're just not ready to... Uh, yeah, um, I, if I remember correctly, they did say that they do have more new models in the Necron range mm -hmm. that uh, are going to be coming out, but they, uh, they're they going to wait to release those um, and let us know what they are. I think the internet rumour said that Oricon is going to be the one that well, that was going to cool. be updated. Yeah. That would be cool, because that model is a little bit outdated, so no, I, I'd like to see that. Um, something I, I was going to mention is uh, I like his cloak, but I, I also like the little scarabs that are running across yeah. it. Those are really cool. That's, <laughs> that's a very, very cool detail. Yeah, I would also like to see like maybe Trazen get updated as well. I would love to see Trazen get updated because obviously being a Nihilak player and Trazen is a, a, a Nihilak overlord, um, I'd love to see him. But yeah, so really nice model, pretty safe, um, yeah. Yeah, no, very, very nice sculpt. So it looks like the Necrons are actually, the first thing I notice here, your codex art has actually been updated. Yes, yes, which is nice because there have been a couple of codexes that, is, that have come out recently that uh, the artwork's exactly the same as the previous edition. And it's always a little bit disappointing when they yeah. do that, so always like to see some updated art. They started teasing some new Necron rules, as you know they do when new codexes are announced. Quite interesting. What they've shown here with this uh, strategic ploy, what uh, are your thoughts regarding, what's it called, hyperphasic recall? Yeah, no, I, uh, I really like the look of this. So uh, according to Games Workshop, what they're planning on doing is uh, the, the, all of the different de detachments will play very differently. And so this is a strategic ploy uh, for hypercrypt legions, which is apparently very mobile. And what this allows you to do is basically bounce your units around from monolith to monolith. Um, which seems pretty cool, um, and it kind of gives a real point to having those monoliths again, which is uh, which is neat because I haven't got any monoliths, so this might encourage me to buy some monoliths. So, well, how do we pronounce this? The Sidonian or Sidonian Scatros? I wasn't expecting this. Uh, no. <laughs> I. I believe it was a Valrak video where he said there was a stilt walker coming. I wasn't expecting it to be quite literally the case. <laughs> uh, this considers this. Uh, sorry, this continues the weird and wonderful trend of the Mechanicus range, where you're not exactly sure what's coming next when they release a new model for it. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, our Games Workshop themselves in the uh, Warhammer stream actually admitted that this model is kind of marmite for lots of people. One that they had some funny reactions around the, uh, the studio. Some people probably don't like it. Yeah. It's, it's very weird. It is weird. They made a good point in the video, which I totally agree with. It does look like something straight out of like the classic John Black era 90s black and white 40k artwork striding out the page because that is just bizarre. It is. It's got, well, it's going to have a couple of different profiles, right? There's going to be basically an anti infantry sniper variant and then an anti vehicle uh, variant. Yeah, the guys on stream mentioned um, that it's like an anti-monster slash anti-character and then an um, anti-infantry. I'm very curious to see how he's going to interact with the terrain rules. Like, if do his legs, are there rules for it being like telescoping legs so he can actually have a smaller pro profile than the model because that's going to be pretty hard to hide um, around cover. It's true, it's true. Although, can I just point out, I love the fact that he's had his legs cut off just above the knees to be literally replaced with stilts. It's amazing. <laughs> I can't get over it. It's a, it's a stilt walker. <laughs> so, I know you're actually interested in Mechanicus. Do you, do you like the model though? I do. I do. Um, I think it's weird. I think it's um, very. It's odd to look at, and it's a bit uncomfortable. But I think that's kind of the aesthetic of of the Mechanicus. You know, you don't look at them and go, "Ah, humanity's finest." Um, no, it continues the uh, aesthetic the Mechanicus have of body horror steampunk. Absolutely. That's, and that's that to a T. And I and, and I really like it. Um, I can definitely understand how there'll be people who don't, um, and that makes total sense, but personally, yeah. I think it's a good model. I would definitely have it if I was gonna uh, continue my Mechanicus collection. Okay, well. So let's talk about my witchcraft. <laughs> To be fair, I didn't get it 100% right. No, but you were like 95% there. Alright, so let's start off with the teams. Scouts, Space Marine Scouts versus Striking Scorpions, no one's surprised about that. That's pretty much been a confirmed rumour since before summer. Yeah. And even Varric himself said, anyone saying otherwise, you're wrong. It's these two factions. And like we've said many times, his source is always spot on. So we knew it was going to be uh, Scouts and Striking Scorpions. So briefly talking about the Scouts, don't need to do one of them too long. Great models, we've already seen them, kind of tease from 40k first, I think yep. like the Kazakin were, and people realise, oh that confirms the Scouts because you can tell the Raven Guard Scouts were on a different basing scheme compared mm -hmm. to the Ultron Scouts they shown off, and a good fit for Kill Team. solid. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's 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 been a nice range refresh for the scouts. Uh, well, unit refresh, um, and not surprised to see them in kill team. I'm kind of on the same page with you that this they they need some really interesting rules to kind of uh, get me to want to play them. Well, yeah. definitely a but. much more appropriate team for kill team than say than the Vicious were. Yes. <laughs> so. Let's uh, move on to the bit that everybody wanted to see, and that's the new Striking Scorpions. So, lovely sculpts. They strike me similarly to the way the new World Eaters strike me, which is a point you made. Safe, but nice. What are your thoughts on them? Yeah, um, I, I agree they are safe. Um, they're very much, uh, you can look at the old resin models, and they're very, very similar to that. But I'm, I'm totally okay with that because, you know, some of these models, their look, their aesthetic is so iconic. I don't want Games Workshop to go around messing with it too much. Um, the World Eaters, the, the Berserkers, the Terminators, and Striking Scorpions, these are, these are all units I don't want them to mess with. I don't want them to change how they look. Um, so, great little refresh. Uh, I really like them. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to getting some. Yeah, I mean, you are a resident elder player as well. Yep. yep. And you're going to have no more floppy chainsaws <laughs> like the resident fine cars yes. you had. Yeah, that would be nice. So the thing that struck me with them, and I was initially, I only say initially, a little bit disappointed by, 
So when I look at that team, I was like, that's gonna have the same problem as like when we're shooting battle reports with compendium teams. It's really hard to tell the models apart what you call them in, in your notes. There are no specialists, which is a point that they um, raised as well. Yeah. But they've done something else to make the team much more interesting. They have, and I, I actually quite like how they've, they've approached this. So basically, you choose your Exarch, um, and then you can add in other aspects. So uh, you don't have to have an entirely uh, striking Scorpion's kill team. You can do that totally if you want. But you can add in some Dire Avengers. You can add in some Howling Banshees. So you can you can kind of really mix and match the models that you have and create um, kind of like a, a microcosm of the Elder Craft world. And that I think is very interesting. Yeah, that's excellent. I think that's a great choice. So. You haven't actually just got Striking Scorpions kill team now. Craft World Elder have their team. They've yeah. got the Spoke Rules coming along, which they've needed. And now between them, Hand of the Archon, the Corsairs, says, and the Void Dancer Troop for the Harder Quins, I think Eldari now are. That still sounds weird to say Eldari. Yeah. I think the Elder are now properly covered in kill team. Yeah, they're well represented. Yeah, so good on Games Workshop. I'm glad these have come out. Get them out of the way, I want bespoke tyranids then. <laughs> yes, let's have some bespoke tyranids. Alright, let's talk about the kill zone. Ah uh, yes. So in our previous video we speculated on what the different kill zones could be. And I think it was fairly obvious that they were going to go back to an outdoor setting. And really the only thing they could do with that is like hone it in on a very specific type of outdoor setting. Yeah. Um, we speculated on a couple of different types. I still think jungle is, a, is one that we might see in the future. I'd love to see that, yeah. And discuss like how that could play. And then I threw out an idea which I thought, you know, would be cool, but eh, maybe a, a bit too wacky or zany. <laughs> I think I called it something like Hive City Spires, but my entire premise of a possible kill zone they could do would be one where it's based on fighting off like gangways and walkways with leaps you have to make to really uh, emphasize the underused jump mechanic is the point I mentioned and that you could drop to your death. That's why I called it Hive City Spies because I could see this like taking up really high up in the sky. They've actually based this now on the ocean planet that the Galudar crashes into and this is like an oil rig and when you jump, when, sorry, when you fall to your death with a failed jump it's just into like water into the ocean as opposed to uh, <laughs> a massive drop. But other than that, <laughs> it's pretty much exactly what I had in my head. Um, so yeah, um, don't send the Inquisition Games Workshop, please, I'm not a heretic. <laughs> um, okay, thoughts? Uh, I, I think that it's uh, awesome that you, you called this. Um, I'm, I'm a freak freak of nature. You are, you are. Um, and other than that, honestly, I think it's interesting, but I personally, I look at this and I kind of go, eh. it doesn't, it doesn't, I'm not blown away by it. It doesn't make me want to go, absolutely, I need to play Kill Team on this terrain. It doesn't draw me the same way as, say, uh, when they revealed the uh, 3D space hub tiles of yeah. Into the Dark. That was basically like a dream come true, um, as far as I'm concerned, hobby-wise. With this, it's variations of what we've seen. Um, like, we've got the smokestack thing that they, it's not a smokestack, but like the refinery um, silo there and various gangways. I do like the texture of the floor. I love the fact, I mean, I've always, ever since I played Metal Gear Solid 2 and getting into sci-fi horror, I've always enjoyed like the derelict oil rig uh, theme at sea. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to wait on the narrative rules on this one to decide if I wanna play it because that looks fairly easily represented by um, other stuff we've already got. Yeah. So it's the rules which are going to determine whether or not I ultimately want to play on this kill zone. And to give uh, Games Workshop their credit, they recognise this. They said at this point, they know pretty much most people in the kill team community have more than enough terrain. Yeah. So they've actually changed the way they're releasing 
uh, boxes in this season. Looks like the teams are going to be separate from the terrain. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have the season three starter box, right? And this side's got both the teams and then some additional obstacles like that so that will fit this terrain. But the actual vast majority that we see here with the board and the gangways and the silo, that's going to be available as a separate terrain box, which I think is pretty smart. Um, a smart move by Games Workshop, so the terrain's available for those that need more. But for those of us who have enough, I think yeah, we're not going to be burdened by having even more plastic that we don't plan on painting. And I think if you if you um, if you look at the the picture that they've put together here, what they're intending is for you to have more than one level of those gantries. Uh, they've actually got them stacked kind of on top of each other so that you can have yes. two or three levels. Um, and I definitely think that will make it more interesting because you will have those different levels of gantries. Get some Necromunda um, style gameplay. Actually, this is very 90s Necromunda. It is, it is. Um, but to that point, I think you will need at least two sets of this in order to be able to really... Looking at the amount of terrain that you get here, I think you'll need at least two sets of that to be able to build those kind of boards. You know, describing it as 90s Necromunda, and the fact I really do like oil rigs as a setting, I think I might have just talked myself into it. I was going to say, are we are we seeing the uh, change of opinion live on the camera right now? <laughs> think of an Imperium Addictum uh, session where there's like a chaos cult on an oil rig, and they're doing a ritual, and it's a dark, stormy sky, and you're going in there as a kill team on your Valkyrie, and you have to land it and like stop the ritual. And just like that, dear audience, Gregor has talked himself into the terrain. Uh, such a sucker for the <laughs> Sometimes I disgust myself. 